start off slow in case some more people are coming in. Um, my name is Paul Miller. I work with Tyler Technologies as a uh, Eastern Regional Sales Lead, so I do the sales. However, my background is on the appraisal side, um, so when needed, um, I come do these talks, public information um, to people like yourself. I have a PowerPoint that's designed to try and answer as many questions as it can ahead of time, but I'll try and get through it as quickly as I can so that we can open it up to questions. There's not a lot of people here, so there'll be plenty of time for questions. Um, but if you could wait until after the PowerPoint to ask, that would be great. So as background, um, the county was uh, part of a lawsuit um, that didn't come to fruition, or didn't come all the way to completion, let's put it that way. But that it was clear that um, a reassessment needed to be done, that it was going to be proven. I say this as background, but also throughout the Commonwealth, throughout Pennsylvania, that's almost all the work we do in Pennsylvania comes from lawsuits. Whether the counties decide to fight all the way to the end and they're unsuccessful, or um, like Lackawanna County, Monroe County previously, they, there's a lawsuit that looks like it has enough teeth that they decide to move forward with the reassessment so that they can avoid spending money, needless money defending themselves against a lawsuit that would eventually end the same way. And the reason is, is it's a base year state. So in Pennsylvania, you do a reassessment and then you don't have to do another one um, until you decide to or until there's a lawsuit. And most of the time it's a lawsuit. Um, the last time Lackawanna County had a reassessment was 1968. So from 1968 until now, they've been using 1968 values, which um, makes it impossible to maintain equity. It's just uh, mathematically impossible to predict values accurately with a base year that's that old. So therefore, um, when these lawsuits happen all throughout Pennsylvania, they're always successful as long as they're filed the correct way, and it's been this much time. So that's the background. Um, the county went through an RFP, pro uh, RFP process um, in which we were fortunate enough to win. Our history is long. I, I don't know how long we've been working in Pennsylvania. It seems like the mid-50s. We've been doing reassessments since 1938 and our um, company was founded in Ohio right next door, so it could, we could have been in the Commonwealth even longer than that, um, but we're the oldest and largest company that does this in the country, and we've been um, active in Pennsylvania since the 50s. So during a reassessment, all properties, taxable, non-taxable, commercial, residential, every single property um, must be revalued at its current market value. So the, the, the key is that it's designed so that everybody pays their fair share. Right now there are people that are paying too much in their tax bill and some people paying too little in their tax bill because the county's using 1968 values. Um, when we put out new values, they'll all be full market value, what we believe the house would sell for on a given day and everybody in the county will be uh, revalued at the same time um, using the same methodologies. And the whole idea is to restore equity to a system that, because it's been so long, um, has been ineffective or is no longer effective at uh, being able to maintain equity and people paying their fair share. Some of the questions that people come up with um, for reassessment, especially when it's not been for so long is the big one, will I pay more in taxes? Um, is the government gonna do a money grab during this process? And what if I built something and didn't have a permit? Or is there gonna be a discovery phase of this where they're gonna find things that aren't currently being assessed? So I'll quickly try and answer those questions. This, uh, the reassessment will mean some people are paying more in taxes. Um, but because it's revenue neutral, meaning 
Um, for the most part, county, school districts, and municipal budgets don't change during a reassessment. Now, that's not 100% true. They can change, I think, up to 10%. But typically, in my history, especially, especially recent history, a lot of the school districts, counties, and municipalities have decided not to raise revenue or uh, the amount of money they collect the year of the reassessment to kind of keep the process clean so that they, the, um, there's no chance that somebody thinks that there's some sort of tax increase buried in it. Now, I don't know the stresses and strains of all the different municipalities and their budgets, so that may not be the case here, but they are capped at, I think, 10%. So in essence, if a municipality collected $10 million last year, when the reassessment goes on the books, the most they'll be able to collect is $11 million the following year. So it's not like the, the amount of money overall being collected is going to be greater. So therefore, when we do the reassessment and we get values in order, if somebody's taxes goes up, it will mean someone else's will be going down. That's a revenue neutral, it's a neutral process where the same amount of money is being collected, so therefore, all we're trying to do is determine who pays which portion, and that's all based on the value of the properties. Um, so, yes, people's taxes can go up, but they can go down, and a majority of them could stay about the same. Will the county or school district collect more taxes? Like I said, um, they legally can collect more. Um, I think the law varies from school districts to municipalities to counties. I'm not really sure, but as of recent years, I think the last two or three uh, reassessments we've done in the state they didn't increase their, re, um, their budgets the year of the reassessment um, at all. So they can increase it, but it's limited. So it doesn't really play much of an effect when it comes to this. So reassessment doesn't re increase or decrease revenue. It just changes who pays what portion of it, of the revenue being collected. Um, so for a value impact, this is a slide that kind of can show you that, let's say, I'm gonna make up a number, let's say the average property in Lackawanna County goes up three times. If your property went up three times, you're probably in the middle tier where it's likely that your tax bill won't change much because you went up about the average of the county. If you went up five times more than your old assessment, well, that's higher, so you'd probably be in category three where, well, my assessment went up higher than most, so therefore I'm, I probably will see a tax increase. And then the first one is, if it went up less than three times, then you uh, would be most likely see a tax decrease. Now, the, the crit critical part of this is, this is what people focus on, but really, our goal is to get people to focus on the value of their property. I'm, I want to educate everybody on the process so that you know what's going on, but the one thing you control in all of this is your assessment. When we send out values, we need you to look at it and say, is this correct or not? If it's not correct, we encourage you to come in and meet with us, and we'll go through that process uh, further in the slide deck. So when I talk about it being three times more or four times more, if your assessment goes up three times and the average is three times, but you still think your assessment's wrong, you should still file an appeal with us. Um, this is just to show you guys to illustrate that. There are some people that will go up, some will stay the same, and some are gonna go down. Discovery of unknown improvements. Yes, we're going door to door throughout the entire county to all properties. Um, there's aerial imaging also uh, for properties that we may not even be able to see the whole farm. Um, so any bit of information that's on the property, when we visit it, we capture, we record, because we're charged with valuing your property as it would, what it would sell for. So if there's a garage there that's not currently on the record, we're gonna add it to the record um, for the purposes of the reassessment. 
It's not for the purposes of giving it to the assessment office and saying, hey, we found a garage that you don't have on, go out and assess it. However, uh, we will have an open line of communication with them if there are large, um, you know, there are probably houses, entire houses in Lackawanna County that aren't currently being assessed. If we come across those in our work, we will alert the assessment office that there is a large improvement that isn't currently being assessed, um, so they're aware of it. But we're going to discover a lot of information, a lot of wood decks, a lot of sheds, a lot of garage, a lot of family rooms. Um, and those kind of things, generally, we don't uh, alert the assessment office. They're not going to try and squeeze every bit of dollar out of the old assessment. This is just to make sure that the new assessments are correct. So the overall process is door-to-door uh, -door data collection, then data analysis, both sales and income information for commercial properties, valuation review, and then informal meetings. And then we get to the formal meetings at the end. So we're going to have trained data collectors go door-to-door, -door, like I said, throughout the whole county. Um, we're currently hiring now. There's ads out now. Interviewing will start soon. We anticipate mid-July is when you would see the first people that would be out. Um, but we are an awesome company. If you have anybody or uh, relatives or anybody you know looking for a job and a possible career, um, you may want to point them in our direction. Data collectors will be wearing a bright yellow vest like in the picture here identify themselves, they're going to knock, um, they're going to ask if the homeowner's home, if there's a mi minor home, uh, we won't, we'll back away from the house and, and not take any information. But if there's an adult home, um, we're going to ask them questions about the property, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, what kind of heating system it has, what year it was built, things like that, uh, any pertinent information. We are not going on the inside of the houses. Um, just an exterior, and when we make contact with people, we're going to ask them questions about the interior. Now, there will be an odd case where somebody has a flooded basement and they're bound and determined to have that data collector come with them to the basement to look at it. That'll be our data collector's call, whether they feel safe enough to do that. If they, you know, if they do feel safe enough, they'll go um, upon the homeowner's request, they'll go in and see it. Um, but it is exterior only. But that's the goal. The goal is when we leave the property um, and then we measure the outside of the house and any outbuildings. The, uh, the goal is when we leave the property after data collection is we have an accurate portrayal of what that property is on the day we were there. We have a sketch of the property. We'll take a photograph of the property um, from the street level we will have the bedrooms, bed, bathrooms, to the best of our estimate. There's a lot of people that are not home. They will estimate based on their training, also based on what they've learned in the neighborhood um, as to how many bedrooms and bathrooms, that kind of thing, are in the home. Things like air conditioning units, fireplaces, you can see as you're measuring. You can see them from the outside. So we get really accurate information uh, through that process take photographs uh, with the tablets in the field. Um, we're going to have a website up. It's up already. This is the website. I did a screenshot yesterday of it. At the end, um, I'm going to put the website's web address plus contact information. So if you wait to the last slide, I'll leave it up. But this website will have pictures of our data collectors, their names. It'll tell you where we're working. It's like a living document that through time, there's videos on there that will explain the process better than I can. Um, but it's going to be up the entire time of the reassessment as a way for you guys to uh, learn where we are, what we're doing, any news that's coming out. After data collection, we mail, and this is a critical piece of information, we mail a data mailer to everybody's property. It has a photo that we took of the front of the house. It has um, a sketch of the house. And it has the information, like I was talking about, what year it was built, bedrooms, bathrooms, that kind of thing. We mail it to you and say, if anything's incorrect, please correct it and mail it back to us. 
if uh, everything is correct, just keep it for your records. But it's, um, it works on multiple levels. One, you know we were there. It builds your confidence um, in our competency because the, the information on the vast, vast majority of them are correct. It identifies things that aren't correct because um, we aren't perfect. It's impossible to know if there's four or three bedrooms in some of the houses or keystroke errors can cause us to give you 14 bathrooms instead of one and a half, things like that. This is a document that we're engaging with you um, to try and get all these things correct because that's the goal, to get the information correct. There's no value information on this, just data. Um, and that's really the first time, other than knocking on your door and measuring, that you'll come in contact with us is the data mailer. We'll also send out to income producing properties, income and expense um, forms to ask them to fill out and tell us about their income and expense. When people buy houses, they look at things that people look at when they buy houses. How big's the yard? How big's the house? How old's the house? What kind of condition is it in? What neighborhood is it in? What school district? When they buy commercial property, um, it's a lot more focused on what is the income that it's bringing in, what are the expenses, vacancy rates, things like that. So we do a local survey. There are some commercial um, services that we can also get that information from, but we always like to engage the local, um, local businesses to get as much as we can uh, from the local businesses. It's voluntary, um, so our return rate isn't as good as we would like it, but we take all the information that we can. And then our job is to predict what properties would sell for. Um, it's kind of neat because in this hyper market that we've been experiencing, experiencing, all of us have sat and said to a loved one, can you believe what that house, what they listed, the neighbor listed their house for, they're crazy. And then three days later, they got what for that house? Are you kidding me? The, the, we don't always know what houses will sell for because humans are involved and there's different uh, market influences that get humans supply and demand um, to make decisions. Our goal is to look at the sale, the properties that have sold, break down what they are as far as all the data that's on that data mailer, where it is, what neighborhood, what's the lot size, how big's the house? Okay, if this would sell for this much, we have a computer system that we um, enter the information in and adjust calculations so that it predicts the same value that the sales sell for within a tolerance. So when we're done our analysis, all the sales have um, been valued in the computer system within uh, industry tolerances that say, okay, you have set up your computer that it will accurately predict value. But we may only have 10% of the properties that have sold. So we take that, that same mathematics and we apply it to all the other 90%. So that's how you do a revaluation in a nutshell. That's on the residential side. We're basically just trying to predict based on sales information what a person would pay for all the other houses. On the commercial side, we look at sales information if we have it, but we also look at income and expense um, information to do the same thing. What would somebody be willing to pay for this apartment complex um, based on the information we have? And we apply that math to all the commercial properties. So that's the data analysis. We use about 30 months worth of sales. A lot of times you have to go back um, that far just to get enough valid sales, a valid sale versus a bank sale or a, a family member selling a property to a family member, that kind of thing is not a valid sale. And then this is a document that came out of the computer system to give you an idea what the computer does is it does what most of you have seen on an appraisal reports, it'll select comparable properties to your property that have sold and it'll adjust those sale prices to match your property and predict what your property will sell for. Just like if you were buying a house. 
Um, we will then do a value review, um, either in the field where we drive with paper or a tablet and we look at each property again, or sometimes we have enough information and visuals that we can do it on a desktop review like this with three screens. And you're basically setting eyes on houses. Again, it's a long project, so there are properties that we'll visit on day one that are the worst house in the neighborhood, uh, and we'll collect it and say it's the worst house in the neighborhood. But then during value review two years from now, they will have flipped it and it will be uh, one of the best houses. So it's another chance to take a, a look at the house closer to the end of the job, uh, closer to the data value. And we're looking for any kind of anomalies, any kind of data errors that you haven't sent us with the data mailers or um, anything out of line, one to the other, um, and that's the value review. Then the notices come. They should come out, I would say, probably February, March, of 2025, that'll be the first time you guys will see values, and it will be on your property, and you'll be highly educated about the process by now, and then you'll look at it and you'll say, could I sell my house for this? And if the answer is no, you call us, and you schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with one of our people to discuss your property and why you think it's not worth that. And what we do, we train our phone operators to take the information, schedule the appointment, but then to encourage you to bring in information that would help us understand what you're saying. Because if you're saying that um, it wouldn't sell for that, it just wouldn't, please get some sales information for properties like yours and bring it in to show us, because we have a lot of information that led us to this decision. Please help us understand what we're missing bring in sales information or, you know, if you have a hole in your roof or a leaky basement or, you know, there's a landslide or some physical attribute that maybe we neglected to take traffic on your corner at five o'clock every day that we wouldn't even know about, um, take pictures, bring them in so that when you sit down with us, we can have a conversation as to why it is or is not worth that. Um, this serves two purposes. One is, it helps the taxpayer be more prepared when they show up to the meeting, but it also has a lot of taxpayers not show up to the meeting because when they do their research, they find out, wow, the sales in my area are this. I didn't think my house was worth this, but I'm looking at sales and it is worth that. That's a good end to the story. And then the people that come in, they come and they sit one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we do not make decisions right there at the meeting. We just take in the information, we'll have a discussion, we'll show you the comps that we used. Here are the comps we used to value your property. Here's how we arrived at it, full transparency. We wanna to get to a good answer. We don't get paid any more money for keeping you higher than you should be. We want you to be where you should be. Um, so we take that information, we put it in parcel order, and then we'll have somebody review it later. And when I say parcel order, you know, you may come in on a Wednesday and your next door neighbor may not come in until the following Thursday and then the neighbor down the street may come in the next day. We wanna make sure that if we are making a change on that street because of heavy traffic or something, we're doing it equitable among all of them. And we still have the ability at that point to make wholesale changes. So if, if there's a cul-de-sac of 12 houses and only five people come in, but they really point something out that we were not considering, we missed, the boat and we should have you know, adjusted the land value 5% on that cul-de-sac for some reason or another, we still have the ability to change all 12, even though only five people came in. Um, and that's how you maintain equity through the project and through the process. So then you would sit one-on-one -on -one with trade information with our person, then we would make decisions and then um, we would be all wrapped up by June of 2025, and the county would mail out notices July 1st of 2025. That's the first statutory date. Then you have, I think, 45 days to file a formal appeal. So even if you came and saw us, and even if we reduced your assessment, it's a free process. I think it's free in Lackawanna County to go to the county tax board. You have the same right every year. Um, you, so you can go 
file an appeal with the tax board. Or if you don't see us, but you still want to file a tax appeal with the county tax board, uh, you can do that then. So during that process, there's still adjustments that will be made. Um, typically speaking, whatever number of people come see us, about half as many go to the tax board and they make whatever decisions they make based on the information provided. And then everything gets wrapped up in October as far as hearings. And then the, the role, the new tax role is actually certified in November, mid-November. So one of the biggest questions people will have is, when, what will the new tax rate be? What will my new taxes be? There's no way to calculate that until all the assessments are certified, which isn't until November of 2025. And it's a big challenge. Right now, it's not a big deal because it's so far out. But as we get closer to the end of the project, these rooms will fill up and people will want to know that answer. And it's a, it's a challenging one because we would love to tell you exactly what the tax rate will be so you can figure out your taxes. But you can't do it because if there's one big resort or one big Walmart that wins an appeal, it can change that tax rate. And until the, until the role is certified, you really can't do it. So um, sometime in December probably is when the tax rates will be struck. And January 26 will be the first time you'll pay any taxes on the new assessments. So I, that's my whole spiel except for questions. So the question was about a previous attempted reassessment. <clears throat> um, I believe all that data, I, or at least some of it, will be available to us. And it'll be a starting point. So for what we do for a living, I've done scratch revals where you have no data. You literally have a piece of paper with the person's name, address, and map number. And you have to draw everything from scratch to what you're describing is sketches and things like that that already exist. There, there's going to be a lot of errors in it, but it's still quicker and easier to collect and correct something than to start from scratch. So we will do that. And we're also scanning old cards. Um, so we'll have an image of the old card at some point also uh, available to us. But the, uh, yeah, we, that money will help us. Um, the money spent back then will help us do our job faster. And our bid price was a little, able to be a little lower because we weren't starting from scratch, if that answers your question. Well, we have to have some questions. I wore a suit jacket and a clean shirt. There. I have a question. Um, how much do outside factors impact the value? So I'm thinking neighborhood, school districts, you know, area of the municipality you live in. Is it, is it more kind of like your, what your home is worth? Like how much is like where you live and the conditions in the municipality? Yeah, yeah. So first question, can you guys hear her or do you want me to re restate her question? Oh, okay. I'll restate it. Um, the question was, how much do outside factors like your neighborhood, your school district play versus the physical house itself? What, what determines the value? Um, it they're not outside influences. Like the school district and the, where, it, where the property is, it's not really an outside influence. It's as integral as the actual building itself. So every single part of what you described is taken into consideration when somebody's going to buy a house. So they may be looking at a 2,000 square foot ranch house here and the same exact one over here. And they say, well, this one has a bigger lot so I'm gonna go there, but this one's in a better school district, so I'm gonna go there. Those are decisions that buyers make all the time. So when we analyze sales, we don't always know how much each little thing, what went into the decision, but we just know this neighborhood's more valuable than that neighborhood. We can see that. So we place more value on this neighborhood's land value. 
a lot of it is land value. When you think about location, um, the structure itself isn't as affected, but um, yeah, the age of the property, the condition of the property, all of it comes into play, but the old adage, location, 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 is still king when it comes to um, what people consider. But it, we really are trying to replicate everything you would consider when you went to buy a house. Sometimes the structure itself is a big, big deal, but sometimes it's not a big deal. The yard is a bigger deal, or the school district's a bigger deal. Yeah, so the market is always going to change. It's either going to be going up or going down in very short periods of stagnation oftentimes. Um, so we do analyze the sales through time and put time adjustments. So if it is going up, we take an older sale and we'll ratchet it up. Uh, if it starts going down, we'll start ratcheting them down and put time adjustments on them. But we put a value on any appraisal, and that includes mass appraisal like ours, has to have a specific data value, which I believe will be um, probably like July 1st or September 1st of 2024. So every property will be valued, and that's not set in stone, I'm not really sure yet, but every property that we value will be as of that date. It'll be like, that's the date that, we, we, we appraised it. Um, so whatever the market conditions are that day. Now, if after that day, 2024, you know, we take a year to do review and then we have informals and now all of a sudden the market's gone up and, and I'm going to use numbers. You have a hundred thousand dollar house. That's the assessment. We did a great job. You, the homeowner agree. It's great. But then by the time ever, the whole process is done, the house is worth $110,000. Well, we don't need to go back and fix it because everybody went up or down, in this case went up 10%, and nobody's upset about it. What throws people off is when it goes down and it's only worth 90 when, all, when it comes to. But let's say that $100,000 house has a tax bill of $1,200. Well, if it goes up to 110, it's still gonna have a tax bill of $1,200. And if the market dropped before we're done and it goes down to 90, it's still gonna have a $1,200 tax bill. So the equity that we're gonna create is gonna still be there even as the market goes up and down. The only challenges that happen, we're doing Wayne County right now, and um, is it Lake Wall and Paul Pack? I sound dumb now. But they have a big lakefront there that they're, they're concerned about those specific properties going down quicker than everything else. You know, if there is a certain neighborhood or a certain type of home that would go up or down faster than the rest. Um, that isn't my experience. I've been doing it over 25 years. It's not my experience that that's something that we have to contend with in the short term. Um, but yeah, that hopefully that answered your question. Please do. I think it's um, somewhere around a hundred and two or a hundred and twelve. Is that a range of one hundred two thousand to one hundred seven thousand? Somewhere around 105,000. Yeah, we've got a range at this point. Um, and going through this process, like towards the end of it, do you typically find that you have a lot of deals? So, when I started, we used to budget for informals about 15%. And it has not been that for well over a decade. And I don't know why. I think it has to do with the, webs the things like the websites and the data mailers. 
people are more informed. So when we used to get 15% informals, it would be people just were not as informed, so they felt, uh, you know, they, they couldn't go look up sales that easy. So they were sure we were too high, but they didn't have a way to, to find out, and then it caused informals that got no change, but it caused informals. Um, but typically, lately, we've been seeing anywhere 5 to 10% at the informal level, and then half of that usually at the formal. But then again, COVID hit. We did Delaware County, which is twice your size. COVID hit right, right. We had to stop having in-person meetings and have them over the phone. And they had um, roughly 5% informals and then 5% county tax boards. Those, that's strange numbers to me. They were the same, but they were both still low, 5%, you know. So I don't, um, we, the contract that we have with the county is that we, the informals are unlimited. You know, if, if um, for some reason there's a huge number of informals, we're there to handle them for them. Um, but we don't anticipate it. Yes, sir. What he's asking is, he'd like to be able. He'd like to be able to um, know how to predict what kind of impact this will have on a tax bill, specifically apartment complexes, um, so that he can make financial decisions between now and 2026 um, to be able to manage that process. <clears throat> the answer is. There is, there's no way. There's no way that I can tell you. I mean, I can tell you this, that if you have enough properties and you do, you know, look at what other people are paying in taxes and you're substantially lower than them, which is what you were saying, not substantial, but you were saying you were lower, you can assume that'll be corrected. And, it, you know, if you think you're $5,000 a year lower than you should be, then you know, you can guess, but it's all just guesswork. It really is. I, there's no way to know. We, we are going to put a value as of, like I said, that data value for all the properties and what it's worth then. We do not look at the old assessments when we make a judgment on the new one. You know, we just, we just value the new one. Now, at the end of the job, we'll do analysis for the county to tell them what kind of impacts are going to be, we anticipate happening. But, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pretend to be able to tell somebody how to manage their, you know, their rent increases or anything through this process. I, d I don't know. Yes, sir. But in, but in that case, you're, you're still going to know the valuation by February of the year before it takes effect. Correct. Well, he'll have an exact valuation, but he won't know how it compares to, there's a lot of math that goes on. So if his goes up three times, but everybody else goes up three times, maybe he's, his rent doesn't change that much. But if you're, you know, if, if um, school districts and townships and boroughs all come into play, if, if this 
borough or township um, goes up double, but countywide, on average, everybody goes up triple, well, they, that's good for their county bill. It's, it seems like they're more likely going to see a decrease in their county bill, but they're still in the same school district and borough where everybody doubled. So there's a lot of math that goes on that I try not to get in here because it can be confusing, but it all adds up to the fact that there's no way uh, to predict. You could do your own analysis of what other like properties are paying in taxes, and I, I don't know. Correct, correct. If you could speak up just a little, I can. I agree. That's why I was saying to you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't believe there's a way that I could advise you to be able to figure that out. Correct. So if you're, if, and here's the key point of the whole process and a message that I want to convey. If your tax bill is 1200 and you get your new assessment, you go through the process, whether you have an informal, a formal, or you're okay with the value to begin with. The idea is by the end of it, the process, you have an, an accurate assessment. This is what your property is worth and your tax bill goes from $1,200 to $6,000. That indicates that you were previously underassessed. And not only does it mean that you were previously underassessed, it means somebody else was paying that $3,800. Somebody in this room may be paying that $3,800. So the process is, is only set up to make that adjustment to make sure everybody's paying their fair share. When it comes to these challenges that you're describing, they're real life challenges, but I, I can't do anything about it. You know, I can't help you plan for it. All I can do is educate and try and eliminate fear because there's a lot of fear surrounding the unknown. Um, everybody's convinced their tax bill's going from 1,200 to 6,000, and I just know that's not accurate. So it's trying to get the word out and, and describe the process and describe how things are so that um, people understand what's coming and um, that the odds are that the vast majority of people or a lot, most of the people will either have very little change, a decrease, and then there will be some that go up. That's how it typically works out. But there's no way for me to help you. I wish I could. I mean, I don't want to it just, there's no way mathematically for me to tell you. Are there any other questions? There's got to be more than one. All right. Well, thank you all for coming. We're going to have more of these. Um, again, the website, I think the PowerPoint will probably be up there at some point. There'll be recordings up there, maybe even of this meeting. Um, uh, so. Thank you.